Hi, my name is Bob Greenit and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. So we are going to be releasing the Deep Impact DZI, the Deep Zoom Images, for your investigative pleasure. And this is the close-in one that we took. And it is around about uh, one millimeter squared, I believe. Uh, the image size is 822 micrometers by 912 micrometers. So it's yes, it's quite a bit less than one square millimeter that we are looking at here. And the overall um, image is 16 bit. So we can change the contrast level. So for instance, here on the second touchdown, you can see there's a pit in the middle here that we'll come back to later. But you can see that if you change the contrast here, uh, luminosity, it would appear that there is a kind of pentagonal uh, shape here in the middle, maybe with a central spot. We'll look at that a bit later. Just give it a little bit of this more balanced um, exposure here. Okay. And you can make this go full screen here. And to br bring the full screen back, you just go control enter and in fact escape brings the controls for measurement and stuff back to the four you can actually go and open here and it's normally something dot dzi and typically within the files that we share there'll be a directory for instance this is uh, dhx2 space area one uh, DZI, it's the wrong name, it's not DHX2, but anyway, um, it'll be an image dot DZI, I might rename these, and that's what you're looking for. It might be embedded in a folder, and um, you are looking for uh, an application to, to view these uh, called the Phenom Image Viewer. Anyway, now that we're in this, uh, I have dumped some measurements down. The first measurement is the channel width. So here we'll take a look at that, where it's chopping through here. And I believe that this is a tornadic beam coming out of the bottom of the exotic vacuum object, coming through that sothic triangle weak spot. And the kind of distance here is 20 microns. And I'll get rid of that one there, and we can go up to the other side of the track here, and you can see that this is 20 microns also. So I'll get rid of that one. And where the actual tornado is touching down, it's seeing this kind of rivulets, this type of um, mark you might see on sediment in the bottom of a river or in sand on a beach um, and it's slightly off the orthogonal to the direction of travel of the exotic vacuum object of the micro ball lightning and this we saw on the lion reactor of the late Neil Crichton Gold and we also have seen this in the work of Dr. Alexander Parkamov and in the work of Dr. Takaaki Matsumoto. And you can see here that these crossways rivets, uh, rivulets rather, these um, channels here are somewhere between 5.53 microns and 7.42 microns. So they do vary. And you can imagine that that would vary depending on the speed of travel of the micro ball lightning as it's interacting with the surface. So the first touchdown is essentially here. Um, one might argue it's here if we measure that distance from that point to that point. It's torn up a little bit more material. 
as it's come in. Maybe this was the first touchdown here. So we'll get rid of these. Um, it's quite nice to use this tool actually. And you can see the overall scale here. And as we zoom in, it changes its scale bar there. Now, the other thing we want to look at now is the width of these carbon tubes. Now, the carbon tubes were also observed actually in line core. I need to share that data. They were observed being synthesized in the Dr. Alexander Parkhamov 225 day reactor as these filaments everywhere. Uh, most recently in the Binjren Huang DHX2, and I shared these in the video O Day Not So Strange. So you can see here down the bottom, it's a 20 micron scale. So one of those divisions is five microns. So this is about, well, it's no more than five, but it's more like four or so microns wide. This is a very consistent laid out carbon tube that's kind of flattened down on the surface and it's it's overlaid these things as it's been put down but there are other other examples that we saw like this one again this is 30 microns so that would be 10 that would be five so uh, this is about two or three depending on where it is in the helical twist um we actually looked at this in a different way here. So very, very nice tube laid out there. But we actually saw them coming out of the actual exotic vacuum objects, the micro ball lightning. Of course, the micro ball lightning manifests itself differently in the DHX2 reactor uh, because it is um, interacting with copper. So in this case, if we play this through, you can see the helical braid uh, effect that's going on with this kind of hollow tube, but it's coming out of this subtor. So you can imagine that the subtor is um, spewing out this material that it had inside as it's moving along, as it's come out of this bigger structure. And you can see clearly the form of this. If I zoom out here, I think I do. Um, yeah. You can see the overall sort of image here. There we go. Uh, there we go. So that it's broken out of here and it's kind of like spewed out this thing, maybe it broke out before this crashed into the ground. But more study of these samples will complete the full understanding going on. Sometimes it comes out as a whole series of braids. And here you can actually see it's actually not completely come out. You can see there's a gap, a breach in this one, and it's spewing out of here, and there's a breach in the side of this one, and it's coming out of here. And this kind of thing might be connecting these two objects together in a coherent sense, but it collapses and leaves these fibers of these mixed materials, but predominantly carbon and oxygen. Okay, so that's that in the Binjuren Huang DHX2 some examples and they like I say they're between three and five microns sometimes two and here you can see here in the Malcolm Bendel thunderstorm generator micro ball lightning breakup this is 1.94 microns and this is over three microns here for these tubular deposits uh, that are coming down from this side of the impact. And over here, uh, again, you can see here, this is 3.38, this is 2.5. I think it's possibly even a little bit bigger up here. So 
between a system that is in a plasma state and this one which is the, sorry this is in a plasma state and the one in the Binger and Huang system where it's in a uh, water environment the actual carbon tubes that are laid down are largely equivalent in form which shows that this definitely is a force of nature that uh, is highly predictable or can be come highly predictable as it is studied further. Okay, then the other th feature that I discussed during Deep Impact was that there are these, what I would consider, touchdown points of the disruption beam, the Sothic Triangle beam that comes out of the bottom of the apple and is able to suck in material. And I showed that in both the ultra experiment that on aluminium foil and in the HHO of Dr. Roshan Amaza on tungsten, there is this zone which is affected, which is about the substructure size, but it has, a, like, like the eye of a hurricane, there is a still part in the center which gets left deposited. And I said, and you can see here, this is about 20 microns across, but it doesn't necessarily need to be. It's about the intensity of the vortex that's coming down. You can see maybe that, that this is the spiral coming in here. Um, over here, it's not quite so big a distance, or I guess it's approximately that across the, the main part there, across the center of that. But it's these touchdown points with the bid in the center that doesn't seem to get damaged, which is like, the I, I described this as a pillar, and we've got another one up here, which is, I believe, where the apple did this damage here, and this was the touchdown of the tornado. I said this was like the cardioid infarction sample of Henk Urian. Um, and in the mark of an exotic vacuum object, Evo, I talked about the cardioid infarction sample. And if you recall, this is exactly a mark of the sacred geometry. This is one side and this is the Sothic Triangle coming in here. And it had this flux loop going through the brass. But if we actually look at <clears throat> this image, which is taken of um, this part of the deposit on the iron of the material that was li liquefied and then deposited down here. <clears throat> um, when we zoom into this area down here, we can see one of these touchdown points of the tornado <clears throat> and the pillar that it leaves there. And you can see that this is a pillar because I've got a light coming from the left-hand side and you can see the shadow over here of the pillar that's standing up. So I am arguing that this is the same thing that we are seeing here with these tornadic touchdown points. Okay. This here is the same as this here. So this leaves an area behind. The other point of real interest is what I was referring to at the beginning, this pentagonal part here in the center. And you'll get a real eye for what these are in time, I'm sure. It will become very clear. So this sort of pentagonal center. And so, when I'm looking at this in the live analysis session um, with Phil Dubois, I did a measurement across here because I expected this to have a little dimple here in the same way that we observed a dimple in the analysis I did in Alan Goldwater's lab, Magic Sound Lab, where we saw one subtor touching down its center and leaving a hole, but the subtor had gone away and only left the other one, if you recall, uh, as part of flux capacitor. Okay, 
Um, so if we actually go to here and we go to remote view and we go down to flux capacitor, uh, which is down here. If you see the photo of Alan and I in the background, um, it's this image here, except I haven't got it in frame. It's this, this one up here. You, you remember I had this one and then there was another one with the same subtors marked out, but over here there was the touchdown point. So it's the same thing that I'm referring to here. This is the touchdown point where it's actually dug a little bit of a hole in there. And in the blog for Deep Impact, I've now included that data and you can download the 3D models, which you can load into various applications. And you can see that as we go across there, it's got a fairly flat area and then it dips down. So there's, there's definitely a pit in this area here. And it's definitely a lower area. So I think that's due to the damage from the apple. And I will actually be able to load this into Lightwave. I actually have this loaded so I can go um, I'll load up model here. And I have this as a 3D object. It's conversion from the OBJ into Lightwave model. And so you can see and get a better impression of what this area here looks like in 3D. In fact, it goes out further, the model. So not only do you have this data, you'll have the 3D object data, and here it is. And it's quite beautiful, actually, because it, it shows us the trails down here of the micro ball lightning products breaking up and you can see how it's kind of burrowed under the surface and come up here and it's come out and going gone along here and you've got a ridge along here where it's traveling over here this actual structure down here actually gives us an indication that maybe there's a vortice and a vortice and maybe another one here coming into this central section where the depression is it's really rather nice looking at it in this way. Okay, so you can put this into your 3D software as you choose and get an idea of how these micro ball lightning are traveling across and under the surface and interacting with it. You can see the influence there of the breakup products of the overall ball lightning structure. Over here as well, you can see the trail over here. So yes, you will have access to the 3D objects in those downloads. Interestingly, if this is one side of the apple, the question is, is the other side of the apple here and if we've got um, and I don't know whether this is true but I noticed this when I was building this or importing this 3d model I noticed that it seemed to be whilst this is a hole this does look raised here on this side is is this a hexagonal imprint here I don't know and in this hexagonal imprint that goes around here are these three points which are vertical and raised. So what I'm saying is you've got a hexagonal here, something like that, or is it octagonal? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, maybe. 
and centered in that do we have three vortices? I don't know. Um, I just saw that there and I thought it might be interesting. Is that showing some substructure on the other side of the apple or is it out of place? I don't know. Anyway, there's a lot that can be learned from this data, both the DZI and the 3D uh, relief maps here. And I would welcome any comments and insights uh, from your good selves as you investigate this data. So thank you very much for your time and I will see you in the next video.